Hey everybody, welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. I hope you are ready for another Clutch Files video. This one is particularly close to my heart and very exciting for me. This video we're gonna talk about hashtag CL23011. This is a cross between the original Zombie Snow, which was low percentage dwarf and super dwarf, and one of the highest, well no, the highest percentage super dwarf purple albino head anery that we have here in the shop. As always, if you wanna follow along the community of people who ends up owning these animals, you can follow that hashtag across social media and you'll see when people post. We love it when our customers get these animals and then use those hashtags. Side note, it's been pretty exciting to see other people as in other like hobbyist breeders and stuff incorporating this system so that we can build up the reptile community, share that information together and have a better idea of how to track these bloodlines moving into the future. Because with the dwarf and super dwarf retics especially, the bloodlines are everything. Now the reason I'm so excited about this clutch, you might remember the video where we took you through the whole back history and story on an animal. It was a combination of different mutations that we ended up calling the zombie snow. You can watch the entire back history on that right up here. This is a video from a few years ago and it's been that long since I or anyone else has been able to see any of these things hatch. So we're so excited to make it happen. So let's start with the basics. One of the most popular and for good reasons breeding project in dwarf and super dwarf retics are snows. That is an anery and an albino together in one animal. They're beautiful. They combine two very different looking traits with like the dark silver kind of Gotham Knight colors of the anerythristic mutation with the bright, bold, beautiful, vibrant colors of albinos. Using that project, that double recessive as a base, we've been imagining and building on it ever since. One of the more exciting things to come along in reticulated python breeding are mochas and mochinos. These are a super dark, kind of a T positive type of albino that takes any of the albino projects and kind of meets them halfway from normal to albino. So you get either what looks like a super vibrant normal or a really dark albino. And then with the way that reticulated pythons brighten up as they grow, it's amazing to watch these animals throughout their lives. So it's no surprise to me that the Mochino snows came out spectacularly. What I didn't know was gonna look like is a golden child snow Mochino. When they hatched, they were almost like a completely purple snake but then just within a few sheds, they started to really tweak the color. It was like this mix of greens and purpley browns. And I made the comment, I was like, this isn't like the traditionally beautiful snake that you see from across the room. This is a kind of animal that you have to get up close and then you see everything shifting. It's almost like those paint color shifting cars that you see where you just wanna walk around it a few times and see what happens. I know that as I held my golden child snow mochino, I would always look at it from the lighting of one room to the next if I walked outside with it just to see the shifts in the color. Now obviously golden child snow mochino is just too much of a mouthful to refer to it. So we began around the shop referring to this animal as the zombie snow. And the reason why is because after staring at for a while, the colors looked like almost like a rotten corpse or necrotic flesh. It really reminded me of uh, I had been kicked by a horse in the stomach and several days later these interesting green and purple colors began to emerge from deep within my body, but they looked exactly like this zombie snow. And so he was named after that. Now at the time that video was made a few years ago, this was really low percentage dwarf and super dwarf animal. The project was really in development. And it wasn't until this clutch, CL23011, that we got to see the snow chinos, the zombie snows, and a bunch of mochino and snow combos, again, for the first time in all of those years. I almost forgot how beautiful they are when they're coming out of the egg. So again, guys, the sire of this clutch technically is not a dwarf or super dwarf because he's a little bit low on percentage. His name is Olaf and he's 12.5% Kalatoa and 31.25% Jampea to be exact. So that's super dwarf and dwarf percentages mixed together. Normally if those two mix, like if it was 25 and 25, 
they equaled 50, you would be okay to call that a dwarf or a, you know, super dwarf dwarf cross. This guy falls just below that at 43.75% dwarf and super dwarf. Fortunately for Olaf, he's still a ridiculously tiny, beautiful, manageable snake to this day. But we don't sell any animals below 50% dwarf or super dwarf. We wanna make sure that we really refine these projects so that our customers get that reliable expectation of size because we're several generations in by the time we're ready to release these. So what Olaf needed to do was recreate himself in the next generation from a much higher percentage super dwarf female. And that's exactly what we did. If you've heard me say it once, you've heard it a thousand times. I love the Richard Bilbo bloodline, high percentage super dwarf and dwarf reticulated pythons. They are the highest percentage into super dwarf, you know, going way back. And other people working with that bloodline, for example, Eric Lee got in around, I think the same time that Richard did, have taken it to new heights and it's incredible to see. I just wanted to do that for myself. So the dam or the mom of this clutch that we use, her name is Legless. Pretty clever snake name, right? I'm pretty sure Thomas named that one. I definitely did not. Anyways, she is a beautiful, really tiny, but until now has been kind of a problematic breeder for us. She's laid big clutches of eggs. Some of you guys might remember the, the time when I had to take her whole clutch of eggs that molded up like a week after they came out and just dump it in the trash with all of my hopes and dreams of seeing snow chinos and zombie snows again. I'm trying to finally perfect and make super dwarf snow chinos and that's the latest result of the cursed clutch. Ouch, there you go. Five years of raising female, putting her to a male. I mortgaged my house to buy. And that's what you get. This year that didn't happen. Her clutch was awesome. They came out amazing. And as we're looking at it, Rob and I down there in the incubator, we're like, did they hatch yet? Did they hatch yet? Did they hatch yet? Peeking in there. Cause I just couldn't wait to see them again. It had been years. Now legless is 75% Kalatoa, which is really high for a visual purple albino like she is. And 12 and a half percent Jampea. Like you said, a little bit of champ sauce on top of there, just to kind of sexy it up a little bit. And one of my favorite things about these animals that Richard Bilbo has produced over the year, like legless, is the super intricate, busy, tight patterns. That's very indicative of the Kalatoa locality being in there. And this mom has just heavy doses of it throughout. I couldn't wait to see that. I don't think the golden child would make that much difference, but I couldn't wait to see that in the normal snow chinos. Pretty good pairing, right? Zombie snow, super high percentage albino head anery. Now there's a little bit of a caveat to her. Up until this point, at the time she was hatched, to be as old as she is, third time, you know, proven laying eggs, there really weren't any 75% super dwarf albino head anneries ever made. Only poss heads from the snow projects breeding double head to double head. It's kind of one of the difficult things about climbing ever higher in percentage in Superdorf. So all of this that we've been talking about was on the line with only a two out of three chance that we would actually be able to get the anery side of it to make the snow chinos and the zombie snows. So there was a lot riding on this, a lot of hopes and dreams, a lot of time. To add to the suspense, the first couple of animals to pip in the clutch were actually the snows and they were so light, we were sitting there, Rob and I like, I think it's a snow, I think it's a snow, but you wanna be careful. I mean, albino is, is obvious, but with anneries, when they first hatch, or even head anneries, they're like super silver. They haven't absorbed all their yolk yet, and that kind of gives them like a pop of color. And so a lot of times when animals first pip out of the egg, they look anery and they're not. As the rest of the animals hatched, we began to see some more and more obvious anneries. And again, when we finally got to take a look at that zombie snow in the egg, it's just a completely unmistakable, solid purple snake. Let's go ahead and take a look at the babies. So you'll see in the purple snows, again, this is fantastic base project. They're beautiful, they're fun to work with, they're fun to look at, and you can make so many different things with them as we see in this clutch today. In this clutch, we got a couple of the purples because dad being a mochino means it, it, Mochino is allelic between mocha and albino. So half of the babies through meiosis get this gene 
over here, which makes the mocha morph or mochino with albinos. And then the other half get this gene, which makes the albino morph. And so you're gonna get half mochinos and half albinos. The albinos added up with the anery, give us those snows. Look at the patterns on these things, just like Legless the mom. Very high percentage, you can see they have those cute, tiny little nose, big eye, Kalatoa super dwarf traits with a healthy, aberrant, kind of chaotic speckling throughout the pattern that is just absolutely beautiful. Now, interestingly, we got the snows where we hit Anery on all of those, but then we got a lot of mochinos. Well, the mochinos, again, are that super dark form of albino. They're great because if you buy a mochino as a breeder animal, you can use it to breed into albino projects or even deeper down that darkness rabbit hole into mocha projects, which we hatched a few of this season as well. It's pretty exciting. So these are extremely variable and exciting animals. They're very rare so far to date, especially Especially with this much super dwarf in them. If you combine together dad's and mom's percentages, you end up with 43.75% Kalatoa and 28.875% Jampea, but hey, who's counting, right? So they're actually high percentage when it comes to dwarf and super dwarf cross, not necessarily high percentage Kalatoa, but they're right below that 50% mark and it shows. The background color on these mochinos is like a deep pumpkin orange. It's not, it's not the bright albino sun fire kind of orange that you're used to seeing. It's li literally like a super dark, rich, inky orange. Man, I need a better list of adjectives when it comes to describing these babies. Now, if that wasn't hard enough to describe, adding anerythristic to that to make the snow chinos is even harder. So the anery gene actually removes all orange pigment. And when you have something that's that deep and dark orange and then you pull it all out, what you're left with are some colors that are otherwise very unnatural to see in reticulated pythons. In this case, and upon hatching, like I said, they're basically like a purple snake. It's like purple on purple pattern. As they come out, they absorb that yolk, they get a couple meals, couple sheds in, and that color starts to pop. What you see is the emergence of, man, if I was describing that deep, dark pumpkin orange and then I pull everything out, there's still like yellow tinges to it, but without any of the reddish coloration in there anymore, that yellow borders more of a green, and there really aren't green reticulated pythons. So here we have like purples and greens and just weird colors to see on, on a retic, which is why I think when you add the golden child gene to it to get the GC snow chinos, the golden child kind of blends all the areas of pattern. So where the snow chinos have the silver side spears bordered by that yellowy green, whatever color it is, and that kind of like lilac purple gray dorsal pattern, the golden child is gonna blend all that together, leave a little bit of speckling, if you're lucky, maybe a rosette or two, and the blend in that mix of colors, kind of like when you mixed all the Play-Doh together, you know, and it's a uniform color, but not quite. You can turn it and shift it, and with all the different recessive color removing genetics that are in these snakes, they're almost translucent. So think if you see those like funky tinted sunglasses where you can kind of see the person's eyes through, but not really, there's a lot of reflection, you're not really sure what color it is. That's how these zombie snows end up looking. What do you guys think? How would you describe these zombie snows? Do you guys think that the zombie snow is a good idea for the name of this specific combo? I wanna know what you guys think. So that's Clutch 11 from this year in 2023 ridiculously exciting things. It's so good after literally more than a decade of working on this project to finally see it in, in fruition where I have over 50% dwarf and super dwarf. We've got that chaotic Kalatoa influence from the beautiful Bilbo line stuff, you know, blended into the, the gorgeous jamp sauce. This is the board line anery jamps that made Olaf, if anybody knows about that, then I mean, if you know, you care, because that jam sauce is hot. But I want to know what you guys think. I'm super excited with it. And for me, this project is, it's not even in its end state. I mean, I, I suppose some projects are like that. This isn't for me. I think with the mocha and the anery combined with several other combinations in the future, we have some ideas to continue pushing this project into its greatest source of value, which for me is bringing out colors that literally do not exist naturally in reticulated pythons to make something completely new, 
and never before seen. That's it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you guys like the clutch files, leave a comment down below, hit that like button so that we know, and we'll keep making some more for you. We'll catch you guys next time. Dude, what if we actually made jam sauce, like hot sauce? That's a really, release? that's a really good idea.